stand for the We have two proxies. Um, David Welchel has given his proxy, undirected proxy, I take it, to Jerry Barron, and David Brandenburg has given me his proxy, half directed, half undirected. Um, celebrating success. Tom, Doug? Is this on? Okay, very good. So the first, um, the first one I would ask um, Stacy if you could come forward, or did you want to read it? Okay. So so Stacy's team. Uh, oh yeah. Oh okay yeah tell me yeah. Well. Their, her team, yeah, yeah. Bring, have them stand okay. back there if you don't mind. No sound. no sound. Check, check. Mic check. It only works in person and phone. <laughs> Thank God you didn't say telling a joke. <laughs> so we can yeah, go ahead and if you would, Stacy, go ahead and read it, please. Now you can hear me. And uh, while the upgrade was going on, the IT department over the weekend had to install 28 client software solutions on systems so they'd be ready for the users on Monday and they wouldn't have any downtime. So all of this was being done, like I said, with, with little interruption, if any, to um, the business and to the members. Once this was all completed, accounting had to come in, run the reports, tie out all the numbers, ensure that everything transitioned correctly. We also had to upgrade QuickTag, the McCormick check printer software, and test it. Prospero, the financial reporting software, Rockton Auditor, and the Smart Connect. Another reason why we need a new software package. <laughs> um, all of this was completed with little to no interruptions to the business and without impacting the integrity of our financial system or breaching any of our controls or compliance requirements. Um, as part of the rework, the IT department was even able to do a lot of the work um, in-house so they saved us a little over $2,000 on the project um, that we had budgeted to outsource. So it was a huge undertaking that the group worked together to get this accomplished and made it look easy. So I just wanna say thank you to them for all the hard work over that weekend, because it was an entire weekend, to get it done without impacting any of our members. Thank you very much, you guys. You guys are awesome. I appreciate that to you. Thank you. Thank you. And this was the GP upgrade. I failed to mention this was the GP upgrade. And keep in mind with the new software, we will not have to do this because we will get all of our upgrades as we go. So 
Um, anyway, thanks guys, and we'll be scheduling a lunch with Tom and Doug to celebrate. So, good. Now you'll want to break. Next up is Roxy Goins. If you could come up, Roxy. Okay. Roxy is doesn't like to be a recognized, but here she is against her will. She didn't know that she was being recognized tonight, so I'm excited to present this to her. Um, in anticipation of the upcoming board election, Roxy processed over 1,000 membership transfer requests to ensure those people were entered into the system in time to cast a vote. There's a great deal of work involved with updating membership records of people who buy a house or property in Bella Vista. Roxy spent a considerable amount of time to have these new customers entered prior to the March 31st deadline. Uh, countless hours trying to get these uh, membership records updated so that they would have the opportunity to vote. So thank you, Roxy, for your dedication and excellent customer service. She's always going above and beyond, so I'm proud to uh, present this to her. Nikki, would you mind coming forward? And and at all. All right. I would like to recognize Shonda for her excellent customer service. Um, Shonda always goes above and beyond when helping out members. Um, but this one particular case in January, she received a phone call about a customer and she could tell that the customer was um, upset and just didn't know what to do or how to handle her account. And Shonda um, walked her through it and calmed the customer down or the member down. And Shonda was able to set this customer up via ACH. Shonda took the time to walk her through every little step and filling out the paperwork for this member and also told the lady that she would mail it to her and the lady mailed it back to her and put a little note on there thanking her for her kindness and her um, calmness during the phone call. And I will say that the, um, Shonda, the lady explained to her why she was upset because the lady had just lost her husband due to COVID. So Shonda was especially um, calming to this cu customer and it meant a lot to the customer, Shonda's kindness. So thank you for all your customer service, not only this time, but in all that you do, Shonda. Thank you for coming in tonight. We appreciate you. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Is that it? That's it. Approval of minutes. The March 25th regular board meeting. Do I hear a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Discussion? Vote? Well, all those in favor? Um, and Jerry, you've got both, you got your proxy, you're voting in yeah, favor as well. Yeah, I'm okay. voting in favor. Jerry Hover voted in favor, and I can't tell about Mike Gabb. Aye. Aye, aye. So it's unanimous. The April 15th work session. So, so moved. Discussion? All those in favor? Mike? Jerry's yes. Yes. Thank you. The April 8th executive session. The directors discussed an allegation of misconduct filed by a property owner against Director David Walchel. Director Bidwell motioned and Director Ab seconded that Dave, Director Walchel violated policy 2.06 member conduct. The directors voted six to zero that Director Walchel violated the policy. Chair Brandenburg abstained, Director Fosdick recused herself. Director Ab motioned and Director Bidwell seconded that Director Welchel record a video apology to Director Fosdick 
and to the membership, which will be posted on the POA's website and Facebook page. The directors voted five to two in favor of requiring Director Welchel to record the apology video. Chair Brandenburg and Vice Chair Sinkis dissented. Director Fosdick recused herself. JAC committee reports. Tom? Committees have uh, sent in uh, summaries of what occurred uh, at their meetings. Uh, Rick Eccles updated the group on the progress of the Lake Burn, uh, Rayburn drawdown. Uh, the valves have been replaced uh, and the lake is uh, beginning to allow, be allowed to refill. Rick and the team are still investigating the source of the water that uh, created the sinkhole next to the dam at uh, Lake Ann Spillway. Uh, more details on the origin and repair uh, to follow. Uh, boat registrations at this point are up 19% over prior year. Uh, Trey Anson uh, gave a report on slip rentals, uh, a review over a three year period showing how they have steadily grown. And uh, we are, we're told that uh, the, all the slips will be uh, leased out in full this year. Potentially a couple of the uh, harder to get to may not. So I'm sure I shouldn't have used the word full, but uh, near full. Um, and uh, at next month's uh, board meeting, the Lakes Committee is going to discuss uh, which lakes, if any, will be lowered next year. Uh, at the Golf Committee meeting, uh, Daryl reported uh, how rounds are up um, for the month of March, very strong uh, showing. Uh, also, the uh, range balls are way up once again. Uh, the new mats were installed at Tanyard Creek. Uh, merchandise sales have been uh, very strong, double the budget for the month of March. Uh, the uh, custom fitting is uh, really proven to be very successful. Uh, and Keith talked about the impact of uh, the, the freezing, which we had last night again, and how that is putting pushing back uh, when the uh, grass will start growing. He shared an article about how uh, a new study put out, uh, you take the daytime high, the nighttime low, and you add those two numbers together. And when they hit 150, that is when Bermuda will start uh, aggressively growing. And uh, we can all report that that number has not been anywhere close to 150 uh, in recent days. So. Uh, it is delaying uh, when the golf courses are going to green up. For the rec committee, um, Joan reported about the success of the uh, curbside Easter egg hunt. Uh, we had uh, not as many as last year, but a lot of uh, very happy, smiling faces. Uh, pickleball courts are going to be painted fairly soon uh, and should be playable fairly soon. Uh, mini golf course uh, has been laid out, uh, concrete is curing, uh, both of those projects are nearing completion. Uh, the campgrounds have been sold out uh, most of the weekends, very popular. Uh, the trails have been very busy. Uh, the pools are getting prepped to be open for the summer season. Uh, and the uh, plaque for the uh, National Registry, uh, Historic Registry for the Bella Vista Country Club will be on display soon. And that's a summary of the three uh, committees. Thank you. Stacy? Can you hear me? Okay. So we took a little bit different approach tonight to the financials. I know that everybody just loves to look at numbers, probably as much as I do, but I wanted to put, we had a great March, and I wanted to put a little bit of a success story first to kind of give you a little bit of flavor to what's going on. And so I've asked Tommy to join me. Uh, he is the expert in the food and beverage area. So I'm gonna let him kind of kick it off with what his financials are looking like, uh, where he's been, where he's going, and um, I, I think you'll appreciate it. So Tommy, and then we'll get to the overall numbers, so we'll still do those. Yeah, so we're looking and we'll see how it goes, um, see what feedback you guys have. 
but it's something I think it would be fun to do every month and maybe get a different, a different director in here to kind of talk about their area and what they have going on in more detail than what I give you, so. Thank you. Food and beverage, uh, actually, um, all of the areas did very, very well the first quarter um, of the year, and uh, we're ahead, by, ahead of budget by a significant amount, so we're hoping we can maintain that momentum. Uh, one thing we'll talk about, but I wanted to show you that big, ugly blue container um, that we've got down in Blowing Springs. That's kind of the first concept we have of what it's going to look like. Um, I'm going to get, as soon as the city... Um, grants our conditional use permit. I'm going to get all of our pictures and things of what we're planning to do with it to Buddy at ACC, and he seems very confident that we'll be able to continue to move forward. Uh, the, on your left is the new look at Highlands Pub and Patio. That's the old dining room. We've turned that into a game room, uh, dropped in some new ceiling tiles, did some refinishes, and uh, it's looking really nice. In fact, last night uh, it was packed. Um, Every table in the game room was full, the bar was full, the secondary room was full. So uh, very, very glad to see that. Uh, something else that came to us this week, uh, we pr participate in what is called Hilton Honors. And uh, people who have or signed up for that uh, can gain points by dining at a restaurant. Well, then Hilton Honors Dining sends them surveys about how we performed. And it came out this week that uh, VV Bar and Grill was a member favorite and first on the list of recommendations. And uh, Lake Point was actually second. And uh, the other restaurants that were listed were in Rogers and Bentonville. So pretty, uh, pretty happy about that. It's um, award-worthy cuisine near you. I thought that was pretty cool. Okay, how are we doing? VV Bar and Grill, uh, year to date, our sales are 297000 versus the 263 budget. Uh, cost of goods, of course, is elevated because of the additional sales. And uh, we're running about a 40% uh, total cost of goods, which is right where we want to be. We always want our cost of goods and labor to stay below 75% because that puts you into the profitability mark. And as you can see, uh, that's right where we are. Uh, $3,000 over a budget of a $4,000 loss. Uh, Lake Point, again, and this is without banquets right now. Uh, we've had a few, but not as many as we would normally have because of the situation. But they're exceeding sales and uh, keeping their operating expenses uh, going. That costs a little bit more in labor right now at Lake Point um, well, through the first part of the year because we were so spread out. Uh, to maintain the seating, but we're seeing those uh, margins close. And out at Highlands, again, uh, we used to do good to do $5,000 a month in sales out there. We're doing 5000 a week now. So uh, that's really, really good news for us. Um, BB Bar and Grill opened in 2018, uh, really become a neighborhood hangout. You can go down into the bar every day and just see about everybody you know. It's a value-centered menu. We run daily specials and promotions, and of course, terrace dining. Lake Point, we opened in 2017. Uh, when Chef Jerry came on board uh, in late 2017, um, that's when we really started turning the, uh, the page there and moving towards a new evolution of the menu, which has become very, very popular. Uh, we do still have 30 uh, booked events there this year, year to date, but we've getting more and more inquiries as time goes and the uh, situation relaxes a little bit. And it's growing as a destination thanks to uh, Kim and her team. I work very closely with them, getting the message out beyond Bella Vista. And right now I'd say about 25 to 30 percent of the uh, business at Lake Point is from outside of Bella Vista. And then of course Highland's new concept, uh, really address Westside's needs for a local hangout neighborhood bar. Um, we extended the deck. That was very popular and uh, just really has some strong momentum going right now. Uh, where are we going? We have a growing digital presence. All three locations have their own Facebook page. We do weekly updates that are emailed out to everybody. 
getting great response to that. Um, and we're really, and I talked about this way back in 2016, 2017. You have to develop history so you can recognize trends in the restaurant business. And we're starting to do that. Um, we've got a solid management team. We've had very little turnover. Uh, we've got some talented key staff, mainly our bartenders. Um, our bartenders do very well. We've got some great uh, servers at both locations and our kitchen. For the most part, we've got a great skeleton crew that really is the basis of keeping consistency uh, where we want it to be. And we remain flexible and fluid to new opportunity. Uh, we're always looking to see where we can improve, what we can add, you know, what's trending outside of Bella Vista that maybe we can bring back in. Sorry, tough to breathe in this thing sometimes. <coughs> okay, and uh, so what you have here is uh, three unique concepts um, that offer something to three different demographics, even though some of them do kind of cross each other. And then now with Gear Garden on its way, we'll have a fourth concept to the POA food and beverage family. Any questions? Tia. So if I'm understanding this right, up there you have all three restaurants. All three, this board budgeted to be down. We're still in COVID restrictions, and all of, two of them were actually profitable over your budget, and one, you cut in half the loss we expected to have. You just stole my thunder. So I was gonna say, Tommy does not <laughs> do good, does not do good at patting himself on the back. So Bar and Grill and Highlands, huge success, yes. $3,000 each in the black, making money, was not expected to. And Lake Point cut it in half with COVID restrictions and with the event issues or banquet issues we're still seeing at Lake Point. Huge success for the, the restaurants. That's a progression I don't think anybody expected. So. Anything else? Oh, anything else? All right. Thank y'all. I appreciate y'all letting me do that. you notice at the top two, we got the revenue versus the total budget, the operating expenses. He's done really well at managing that. And then his EBITDA again, it's just, just, it's a great story. Uh, the, the food and beverage is doing well. Okay. So let's look at the overall financials. Um, I'm not sure how I'm going to follow that, but we'll, we'll give it a shot. Okay. So this is March only. So if you remember um, when we talked last month, we talked a lot about cost savings. We had a hard February because of weather. Um, tonight, we're going to flip a little bit. In March, we're going to talk about revenue because we have had a stellar month for revenue, um, not what we would have expected. So our revenue actual is at $2.7 million versus $2.4, $351,000 over what we had budgeted for revenue. So better than budget, if you look at the top left-hand corner, F&B, $58,000. So food sales were up $47,000 and liquor was up thirteen. dollars Golf, incredible, up $107,000. The annual green fees were up 25,000. Green fees overall, 34,000. Every one of the golf courses hit their budget for green fees. The pro shops up 24,000. Recreation overall is up 31,000. Um, the RV park is just, it's hitting on all, all cylinders. They're up 20,000. Boat rentals are up 3,000 and facilities are up five. Lot sales up 16,000. Transfer fees, this is an interesting one. Would never ever have guessed the real estate market. Transfer fees are up $60,000 for the month of March. Shows you how busy we are. And then water new connections are up $25,000. Worse than budget, we're still watching activity cards. Think some of that's probably timing. Uh, water sales are down a little bit. RV storage is down a little bit. If you look at year to date, a lot of that's timing because we were over last month. And then facility fee or facility fees for the banquets, obviously COVID's down about $6,000. Um, cost of goods is up, which you would expect. So the pro shops is up about 18,000. Food and beverage is up about 21, um, worse than budget. And that kind of goes in proportion with the revenue. So I actually went back and looked at some percentages and things to make sure we were still in line given our revenue was so high. And it is, it's right where you would expect it to be. Um, salary and benefits, we're at 955,000 compared to a budget of a million. So a variance of about 52,000. Last year we were at 880,000, but remember March was kind of when COVID hit. Um, other expenses are at 805 versus 820, so 21,000 there. And then total operating expense is 1.76 million. So we're still down in our operating expenses by 73,000, but you're starting to see some of that timing come back. 
that we talked about last month. It's not quite as uh, far off as what it was last month. And we'll talk about operating expenses here in just a second. And then our EBITDA, we ended at 688,000 compared to a budget of 341. Amazing, a variance of $347,000 for the month of March, driven by revenue. Not by something that's controlled through cost savings, but by revenue. So um, it's just a great March. Uh, gross profit, food and beverage is running about a 60% gross profit, which Tommy just talked about. And the pro shops, I looked at them, but they've had so much going on with their demos and everything that it's hard. They have such a mix to really look at their gross profit. Uh, EBITDA, some of the big wins, uh, better than budget. We had our golf operations at 90,000. Expenses were flat. The positive EBITDA uh, was driven strictly pretty much by the positive revenue. Um, general income, $84,000. Transfer fees are up to 60. And interesting enough, bad debt's up. Uh, we were able to reduce our bad debt by $24,000 this month. So accounting had a record month in collections. We brought in over $300,000. And with bringing in all that money, uh, which is normal in March and April, you got tax returns, you got stimulus and stuff, so that's not, not going to be an every month thing. But because of that, we brought down our bad debt by $24,000. I would not have expected it. Uh, recreation, $60,000, $30,000 due to the revenue variance in the RV parks, and then the $30,000 under budget in various areas. So um, the expense variance is primarily driving, primary timing for uh, the recreation. So just a great March. So I wanted to make sure we talked about March before we talked about year to date. Oh, I guess I got the clicker. All right, so I'm used to you clicking. <laughs> so POA, this is POA only year to date. So if the top left hand corner, let's talk a little bit about revenue. You can see how January's up, February came down, we all knew that, and March has gone back up. Um, revenue better than budget, 220,000 year to date. FMB's sitting at 45,000. Um, 55 in food, and then they're off by 10 on their facility fees. Recreations at 52,000, 16,000 in, in the boat rentals and fees, 26,000 in the RV park reservations, which is largely in the full service guest fees, and 5,000 in facility fees, swimming classes in the tennis area. Our lakes, 9,000, 6,000 in boat registrations, and 3,000 in dock fees, and then in other areas. Assessments are up 28,000. Transfer fees are up 99 year to date. Collections are up 41 year to date. Advertising is up 11. And then our activity cards are still down at 26. But again, we're hoping some of that's timing. When you look at your expenses, you see the same trend. You know, you're starting high. And in January, we talked a lot about the timing of expenses in February. And we're starting to see some more of that, those expenses coming in in March. Salaries and benefits. So 176,000. We know that a lot of that's due to open positions, hard to fill positions, a delay due to weather. We've talked a lot about that this month. Membership training and travel, 30,000. Conferences were canceled or going virtual. Maintenance and repairs, 105. Timing and catch up due to weather. I looked at that one and we'll talk about it a little more here in a minute. Uh, advertising, 25,000. Sales are picking up. You saw what the restaurants are doing. They don't need to do a ton of advertising. Um, bad debt, 29,000 year to date. We talked about that. And then uh, over budget, we got professional services of 8,000. Doug's expensive in his legal fees. And our credit card fees, 8,000. Of course, sales go up, your credit card fees go up. So um, that's where our expenses are. And then EBITDA, EBITDA is at 1.2 million. Um, just amazing for March, for year to date, for first quarter. We're better than budget by 667,000 and we're better than last year by a million dollars. General income, $169,000. Transfer fees. Collections, recreation 130,000, golf maintenance 90, marketing 40, and FMB 33. So, um, just really a great year to date, year great quarter. This is just kind of another snapshot. Um, so you can kind of see we're hitting on all four. Um, I talk about revenue, gross profit, expense, and EBITDA off to the right. And I say at the bottom, all four metrics are better than last year, but they're also all four better than budget. So, it's we're really doing well. So our revenue you can see is higher than last year in budget. Gross margins higher than last year on budget. Our expenses are down. Part of that's timing. Part of it's the salaries we've talked about. And then, of course, our EBITDA is well above budget in last year. So let's talk about water. This is just water. So water is pretty flat. The actual to budget, you couldn't have budgeted any better. 2.23 actual and 2.23 budget. Cost of goods, they're a little bit over on their cost of goods. We talked about that last month and that they have a timing or a delay um, when their rebate kicks in on their, their water sales. 
Gross profit, actual is 1.67 compared to a budget of 1.68. Operating expenses is 815 versus a budget of 853. So they're just short of their, their operating expenses. And then EBITDA is 855 versus a budget of 828. The picture at the bottom is just kind of the same picture. Just I mean, they're pretty flat. They budgeted well. Revenue is where it should be compared to last year and compared to budget. Um, top right-hand corner, so there's your expenses. And Jan had asked in one of the prior meetings about salaries, so I put that up in the right-hand corner. And you can see that salaries actual for them year-to-date are 241000 Budget's 253 and last year we were at 267 So we're actually down from budget and we're down from last year. Um, and then I did POA too, but they're split out. And then this is just kind of a summary of their expenses. Uh, revenue, water sales are um, 23,000 and new connection lines are 3,000. Some of the stuff they're off, intercompany interest, they're down 10,000 and that's the intercompany loan because of the rate changed after we budgeted. And late fees are down 16. They didn't add any late fees in February due to weather. Uh, expenses, there is nothing under budget. They're all right on. Salaries and benefits, 16. Membership training and travel, eight. Equipment and tools, seven. Supplies, six. And postage, six. So let's talk about the POA expenses by category. So up in the right-hand corner, Jan, your, your salaries and benefit question you had. Our actuals were at 2.33. Budget of 2.52. And last year, we were at 2.61. Um, and then the bottom is just kind of a breakout of all the different ones and where we're at. And so, um, so I drilled into expenses a little bit more this month and just looked at them myself because we've talked a lot about savings versus timing. So on the savings side, payroll and taxes were at 185000 That number is a little different because it has some health and different things in there that we didn't um, peel out. Or we peeled out before, but we budgeted for positions that are still open in the weather in February. The payroll POA is 166 and the taxes is 7 and the water is 11 and taxes are 1. Bad debt, we talked about that. We're at 30000 of that. Additional collection campaigns, the economy opening back up. We should, I really think this is going to be some long-term savings here. We may see a little bit of swing throughout the year, but I think it's, it's pretty solid. And then membership training and travel, 39000 And I think this is a split. Part is due to conferences being virtual and cheaper or canceled due to COVID. And part of its timing, you got some local travel in there with your people driving around doing inventories and different things. And then on timing, so we've talked some about timing, and this is an example I wanted to share. Maintenance and repairs, 105,000. You know, you might ask yourself, why would we have timing of 105,000 in March? That's a lot of money. Well, we budget flat in some areas, so you have no idea when something's going to break down throughout the month. So you can guess what month it's going to break down, or you can spread it evenly across 12 months. And some directors choose to pick a month that they think it's going to happen in, and some just spread it evenly. And so what I saw is we had some bigger numbers that got spread evenly where they feel they're going to have repairs sometime this year, but they're not exactly sure when. And so luckily they must not have had the repairs yet, but they will at some point. So, so I do believe that that's still timing. Um, maybe when we get to the end of the year it won't be because we didn't have the repairs, but we don't have a crystal ball, so it's our best guess. And then, of course, uniforms are down 11,000, another one that's an example of timing because if we're off on our hiring, we obviously aren't buying uniforms until we hire people. So this is just kind of a snapshot of EBITDA um, by department. So you can kind of see everybody's contributing to the EBITDA savings all the way across the board, general income being the biggest one. Golf ops is still down by 25, but you know what? They made such a huge increase this month that I really think they're coming into their busy season and they're going to have a different story next month. Um, so for the loan, so not much difference here. We paid another fifty thousand towards our loan commitment of the two eighty. Um, we've paid one hundred and fifty now year to date, and um, on twelve thirty one we had a two point nine two million balance, and right now we have a two point seven seven. Again, our commitment's two hundred and eighty, and we're on track to have this our commitment paid off in the first six months before we kind of fall into that cash shortfall at the end of the year. Uh, if we end up at the end of the year with extra cash, then we can make a larger payment at that time. And then this is just the one pager that you guys had asked for. The only thing on here we haven't talked about is really the cash balances and the POA is sitting at 2.4 million and the water is sitting at 3.4 million. So, and that's it. So a lot of information, I get it. Um, Questions? I think I'm kind of speechless. <laughs> <laughs>
good. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Thanks, Stacy. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Any response to last month's open forum? There were none. There were no questions last month. Okay. Open forum for this month. We have one individual who signed up to speak. Um, hopefully he can hear me. Dan Berghammer, if you'd like to come in. I'm Dan Berghammer. Uh, I'm a board candidate. I live on Kensington Drive. And um, I'm going to talk about the uh, presentation that was made for the automation systems uh, in the working session last week. Uh, I'd like to thank Tia Bidwell for her concerns about accounting for the money. First off, and importantly, I'm all for automation of the workplace. But where did the money come from? Let's remember this, we just came off the worst year of business in recent times due to the pandemic. The POA was virtually closed for a year. In spite of this, Tom Judson was able to get his department heads to cough up about $400,000 from their budgets for this project. Here's a short summary on budgets. When budgets are created by department heads, they include monies for everything they need. And then most managers add in a little contingency money or what if money. This isn't necessarily a bad strategy until the end of the year. If they see that they haven't spent all of their allotted money, they know they won't be able to justify it for next year's budget. So they spend the money, and then next year ask for more. So again, I ask, under these circumstances, remember, worst business year ever, how did these department heads provide this much money? Are their budgets that overinflated? If so, how did they get approved in the first place? Okay, so let's look at needs. First off, the North Star system isn't a total standalone system. It doesn't have accounts payable, so you're having to aug augment this system, system from the get-go. What else is missing? From my personal experience, I owned a business. When I implemented this auto the automation system in my business about three decades ago, I picked a system that did it all, including accounts payable that is crucial to any business. It also did accounts receivable, payroll, inventory management, shrinkage control, online ordering, and even did pass off to the general ledger. I could literally print a financial statement at the touch of a button anytime I wanted. Surely with the advances in technology over 30 years, the system, the type of system you're looking for should have all the functions needed in one platform. And regarding this financial investment, as Tom Judson said, this is a whole lot of money. Seems to me like there's something missing in the equation for this amount of capital outlay. Where is the ROI, or return on investment? Tom Judson said it will make it much easier to do business while keeping our maintenance costs about the same as the old system. That should be a given. But for this much capital expense, shouldn't there be a significant financial gain to be had, along with just making it easier to operate? My system provided me control over my profit mar margins, which increased 7 to 8 percent. That alone paid for the system in pretty short order. I believe there should be a measurable financial gain to be had with this much capital spending, spending an amount of almost a half a million dollars. Thank you, Dan. Are you interested in hearing the rest of this? There's only one speaker. Since we're, we're limited to three minutes, sorry. You're kidding. No, I'm not kidding. This is a lot of money. I'd like to ask for an exception so I can just read a few more paragraphs. Um, there are no exceptions. Thank you very much. Thank you. And we have an email from a member that Tammy will read. This letter is from Stacy Berger, Headley Circle. My questions and concerns are in regards to the new beer garden that will be opening in the Blowing Springs Park. 
I completely see the connection between a good time on the trails and a few brewskis at the end of the day to wind down. But is the shipping container that recently showed up at Blowing Springs going to be the beer garden? If so, has the board considered the ACC guidelines for such a structure? Also, according to the USDA, these containers are not safe to serve food and beverages out of due to the risk of the acidity in the food or beverages causing erosion and potential for zinc leaching into the food or beverages that will be served. In addition, whatever this shipping container is going to be used for, the board should note that these containers in general have high levels of chromates or lead in the paint due to the marine coatings. Even the very recent non-toxic phosphate paints are toxic to fish. So I would question its close proximity to the natural spring and the marine life that calls that spring home. Again, I totally see the need for a resource such as a beer garden amongst the biking community, and I think it's a great way to spark some revenue. But I also have a bit of concern in that this particular location shares the entrance and exit of an elementary school and a children's bike park. With all of the great properties that the POA owns, is it possible to put it somewhere else? Thank you for your time. Yeah. Uh, can we, is there anybody else that wishes to say anything? There was not at that time. I can go check. Why don't you check just in, check, just in case? Okay, we don't have anybody else, so we'll respond to both of those uh, comments. Uh, on the first one, um, I encourage our, our property owners to uh, view our financials from last year. We actually had a very good year. Uh, we exceeded our budgeted, budgetary goals, so um, last year was not our worst financial year. Um, anytime you do a comparison, I think when you look at the financials, I always think it's important to do a comparison to the budget and a comparison to prior year. Um, because that, those two different comparisons give you information as to how the property is doing. Um, you know, when Stacy was doing the presentation today, she gave, she gave comparisons to budget, but she also gave comparisons to prior year. And I think that those two, when you look at those two different types of comparisons, is very important. Um, we try and get our, uh, our budgets to be as tight as they can. Um, and our, our team has consistently been able to make sacrifices when needed. Now, the challenge is, is when, you, when we make those sacrifices, you can see it. I can see it on the golf courses. I can see it when we're limiting our staff. You know, we don't have as much staff as we, we really want to, and the customer service isn't where we want it to be. So I, I, I think our staff needs to be complemented in their ability to generate savings when needed. Um, but we had a great year last year. Uh, as to the other issues, I encourage uh, everybody to uh, view the presentation. I'm gonna do this si very similar presentation tonight, but shorter at request. Um, I encourage them to watch that. Okay, regarding the, uh, the shipping container, uh, before using a shipping container for uh, the Gear Garden, uh, we researched several venues currently uh, using containers, uh, such as restaurants, bars, offices, and uh, housing. I've actually personally been to a restaurant uh, that was made out of, you know, 100% made, used, made out of used shipping containers. Uh, we also did some research uh, and uh, got some uh, information and standards uh, by the Modular Building Institute and the National Portable uh, Storage Association so that we could make an informed decision. Uh, the container's exterior will be sealed and wrapped. Tommy showed a picture earlier. Uh, and the interior will be primed and painted. Um, we have been working with the ACC, the city, uh, ABC on getting approvals and permits for the beer garden. None of them have uh, uh, stated any objections or any concerns. 
there are no plans to serve food out of this site, um, except we might do packaged food like uh, packaged chips and so forth. Uh, we'll be serving uh, alcoholic and non-alcoholic drinks, mainly beer and wine. Um, uh, due to the high foot traffic and the, the bicycle traffic at Blowing Springs, uh, with the Back 40 connection, uh, we really feel that this is going to be a great location uh, for our campers, their families, our uh, hikers, our bikers, uh, and we thank everybody for their input. Thank you. And that was all I have. Uh, again, Tom, report on non-performing lots. Testing. Oh, there we go. All right. So this is fairly similar presentation to the work session, but we wanted to make sure some people watch the work session and some people don't. But more, we have more attendance, uh, more views of the regular meeting. So I wanted to make sure this is really important information. We did a comparison of our non-performing lots, and non-performing lots are those that are uh, two things. They're either over 90 days on their assessments. They haven't paid for 90 days. Or, uh, in addition to that, lots owned by the POA. Both types, whether they're not paying on the assessments or, and one's owned by the POA, neither are paying assessments, so they're non-performing. Okay? Um, and here are the numbers. Way back in 2016, we did not have a collections department. And we started getting very aggressive in um, hiring a, a collection staff, uh, our legal team started getting very aggressive, um, and we took this from 17.3% of all of our lots. We have 39,000 lots. Now, most of these, pretty much all of these non-performing are unimproved, and each year you can see we've steadily lowered it all the way down to 7.9%. Uh, we actually had a meeting last week, and uh, I uh, put out the challenge of, what do you think we're going to get to next year? Um, you know, our goal is zero, whether it's a realistic goal. But uh, what I was pleased with is every single member of the team came in with a number lower than me. They really, they want to keep on driving that number down. So it's a team effort. Uh, it's the legal team. Uh, it's the accounting team making this happen. And here's a comparison. Um, it's not a great comparison, but uh, we often compare ourselves to Hot Springs Village. Um, uh, whether it's a good comparison or not, you can make uh, that decision on your own. But they're at 34.4%, and we're at 7.9%. Also, lar for large-scale communities, the average is approximately 20%. So us going out and getting that money, that's important. Uh, a property owner, they purchase that lot, they have an obligation to pay their assessments. Uh, so that's a, the uh, increase or the improvement from 17.3 to 7.9. That's 3,668 additional lots that are paying their assessments today that were not previously. That's an impact of $704,000 or a cumulative five-year impact at the end of this year. That's where the cumulative hits is $2.1 million. That's a lot of money. And we have a lot of infrastructure, a lot of buildings, a lot of repairs, all those things, that's where that money goes. So really want to compliment the team for a job well done. Now, this isn't just all revenue. There's expenses att attached to this. I mean, it, we, we have to have staff that calls and works and works it, but Clearly, we're, we're, uh, they're doing an outstanding job, and it's a huge benefit to our uh, POA. Any questions on that? Yes, Tia. You mentioned expenses, but if you're looking at $704,000 a year, whatever you're paying them, they might deserve a raise. <laughs> because that's, that's, I don't know that there's anywhere else in our budget that anyone could make that significant of a difference mm -hmm. than that. It's, it's a huge oh. improvement. 
so we're now down to about, out of the 39,000, we're down to about 3,000, 3,100 that are not paying. So we're still working hard because that's still a large number. It's still a big number and we want to get that numbered lower. Um, but it's a huge improvement. Well, I have no doubt they will now. And the, and the <laughs> consistent, and, it's, and it's, this is not just a one off. Hey, they had a good year. This is consistently, they're doing better and better every single year. Uh, that takes a lot of effort. Can I ask what your number was that you want it to get down to? I'd like us to get to 7% because I think that at this point, the low hanging fruit is gone. These are the hard ones. I mean, you know, Doug's talked about this where it's, we're at the second and third generation and unfortunately the original purchaser is, is deceased and trying to get that or they're in bankruptcy or you know, all these really complicated, they have liens against them, not necessarily the liens that we've placed, but others have placed. So, the low, it's, it's getting harder and harder to get that number lower. So if we got to 7%, I'd be really happy. From Stacy, huh. Doug, and Tom, are there, was there a, like a common denominator of why people were non-performing lots? It's, it's hundreds of different reasons, um, you know, many, many different many reasons. But, uh, you know, Doug and his team and, and, and Roxy works on this. They do the foreclosures and we have the foreclosure sales. Well, if someone's gonna purchase a lot for five, six, seven thousand dollars $7,000, they're, they're gonna pay their assessments. Uh, so we go after those lots and they get it sold. Um, so. How many lots does the POA still own? Oh, uh, we're down to 30, 20? Yeah, Th that's about right. Just and a handful of lots. Three years ago, it was over 600. So over seven hundred. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and some of the lots that the POA owns have issues. There's 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 legal issues that you know Doug and his team are trying to sort through. So it's not like we're holding on to these. In some cases, we want to sell them, but they have problems with us with the lot. Well, everyone we do post online is gone in like ten seconds. Exactly. Easy. Exactly. Very hot market right now. Any other questions? No. Fantastic. Nice job, Doug. Stacy, Roxy. The proposed replacement of our community management software. We're not going to give you a rest, Tom. No, we're not. <laughs> All right. So I was uh, ordered to shorten this presentation. If you'd like a longer presentation, you can go and view the uh, work session. But there are certain things that we needed to cover. So first of all, the, this original presentation was put together by Bill Booth. Uh, he's an expert in this field. So I'm, in some ways, I'm, I'm stealing his thunder. Uh, and he made a presentation to the board on the 13th of this month. OK. When Stacy was put in charge uh, of accounting, we went to her, or I went to her, with several very clear goals. Modernize our point of sale and accounting system improve the accuracy and effectiveness of our internal systems, and improve the member experience through the use of technology. I think that's a, the last one is really important, improving the member experience. Now, anytime you're looking at a software system, there are important key elements to make sure you make a very good decision. So first of all, we brought in an expert in the field. There's a lot of software packages out there. We wanted to make sure we brought in an expert so we were not, you know, venturing into the woods blind. And uh, Bill Booth helped us a lot. Next is in, in involving key employees. We want their input. They're the end user. We need their buy-in. We need their commitment. We need their involvement. Conduct a thorough due diligence. I think last week we talked about how many hours Stacy herself has put into this, and it's very impressive. What number did we come up with? Uh, and if you add up all the uh, staff that was involved, it's pretty impressive. Uh, we also did uh, five demos, and those demos were uh, lasted between six and eight hours each. Uh, and we check references. Uh, once again, we ensure the upgrade enhances the member experience, 
And then when we get down to uh, where we want to go or where we think we want to go, we want to aggressively negotiate to get the most bang for our buck. So these are the key principles, and we're going to hit on each one of these. Okay, so first of all, Bill Booth interviewed 22 key staff members uh, over a 25-hour 20, period. He has a customized 1,500 um, item checklist that he uses in these interviews. Um, additional 25 hours of internal analysis by Stacy and the accounting team. On top of that, we just mentioned uh, five demos. Every single one of these ran between six and eight hours. So they had a total of 40 hours of demonstrations, uh, eight hours of uh, staff evaluations where they come together and discuss it. And we also did uh, reference checks. Uh, the community that I last managed uh, is on North Star, one of the, uh, don't want to get to it, don't want to reveal the ending, but North Star uh, is the one that we're recommending, and that is what uh, my previous community is using. I contacted a lot of the people that I know there, very high marks. Here's a list of the, uh, the staff that was included. You can see uh, F&B, Rec, Tennis, Lakes, Membership, IT, uh, marketing, golf, accounting, a lot of people involved. Okay, the evaluation process. Okay, so this is our current system. Uh, and, and after you get an understanding of what our current system is, you, I think you gain a lot of respect for our IT department. Um, small but mighty IT department. Right now we have, uh, we use TEI, now that's, I always, I've done this a couple times. TEI, Total E Golf. That's the name of the company. So that tells you that they're golf centric, which is not what we are. We're, a, we're, golf is very important, but we're a lot more than golf. So we have five integrated systems right now, 11 standalone on top of nine additional standalone and five manual. So in total, we have five applications that are integrated in TEI, our current system, 20 standalones, and five manual. That's not a formula for uh, efficiency. With the software program and the package that we're recommending, we would integrate 24, go from five to 24 uh, integrated systems. That will allow these systems to talk and communicate so much better. Uh, standalones, we'll still have five. We'll go from 20 down to five. And these are robust systems, and they make sense to keep them on their own. And then we'll have one manual. And it's really not manual. We're using Excel, so it's not 100% manual. But we're clearly upgrading. And here's a list of them. ADP, makes sense, ADP controls, uh, uh, administers 60% of the nation's payroll. Makes sense to have them as a carve out. Um, Taylor for the water system, it makes sense. And then F&B uh, using Excel, just makes total sense. But the key number is the 24 applications all integrated together instead of just five. All right, we talk about the member experience. This is very important. So first of all, activity cards. They're going to be digitized wherever my phone is. You're going to be able to get in to Branchwood with your phone. That's going to be your membership card, your activity card. You're going to be able to get guest passes, and we're going to be able to push those down to your guests. It's going to be make the member experience that much easier. Table side POS. We're going to have the servers. They're going to have a POS system. A on iPad, they're going to put your order in right as they're standing in front of you. And once they hit order, it immediately goes to the kitchen. That's going to save on ticket time or the, not, the amount of time it takes to get your food. We call it ticket time. About three to five minute improvement. That's really, that's really important. Also, anytime someone's writing something down and then run, running over to a central computer and then retyping it in, it's an opportunity for a mistake to be made. By it going in directly in, makes it much easier. And when it goes into the kitchen, it actually goes into multiple areas. There's going to be a printer, 
next to the hot section where they cook the hot food, and there's another printer in the, in the salad section. So it actually splits, and it makes it much more efficient. Uh, member portal will allow members to conveniently make payments online. Uh, billing statements generated for investors. This doesn't sound, this doesn't apply to everybody, but it's a complicated issue that we currently deal with. Uh, there will be single billing, single billing for water and POS. How long, how many, how many years have we been ask, asking for that? And online reservations for rec classes, marina rentals, campgrounds, tennis, all, everything online, much more efficient, a better member experience. Management will be able to target uh, the members preference to tailor fit their experience. We'll have information, we'll be able to send customized emails out. Uh, the example I used last week was, let's say Jerry uh, was a regular customer at Lake Point and for whatever reason he hasn't uh, gone for a year. Maybe we push out an email just directed just to him and said, hey, you haven't gone in a year. Here's a discount, come on out, let's get you back. Our ability to get information out of our system, our current systems, is so difficult and it's going to be so much easier with the new system that we're proposing. Uh, members will be able to make purchases and print their own tickets for events like the 4th of July, member appreciation events. So for member appreciation events, you've got to come in, you've got to buy your tickets, and then you go back home. Um, you'll be able to do it online. Uh, curbside orders will be that much easier. Uh, the mobile app, um, this won't be for everything. We'll, you'll still be able to do it in person and calling up and so forth, but we're shifting a lot of these things to mobile, and that's the, the direction that the industry is going, and that's the direction where a majority of our property owners want and make it easier on them. But you'll still be able to call member services, and they'll still be able to help you out. So if you don't have a mobile device, don't worry. Um, Online tea times and payments will be extremely user friendly uh, and members will be able to receive text messages from the pro shop. So let's say we have a half hour delay in, uh, because of uh, frost. Well, we had frost this morning. Um, we can put out a message to the people that are just on the tea sheet, very quick and efficient. Hey, show up 30 minutes late because of the frost, everything's been delayed. So much better member experience. All right, two different categories. It, we were so fortunate in, Bill, in bringing in Bill Booth because he's worked with those systems. And they're either HOA, POA oriented, or they're club uh, community oriented. And so it's, it's, it's a confusing sea of different software packages. Very pleased that we brought in Bill. Here are the companies that we looked at. Uh, this is HOA, POA oriented. Um, you can see top, st strong reputation, been around since 88, six million doors, uh, Yardi, uh, Circa Connect. Some of these companies, you look at the bottom, uh, village management system, they didn't want any part of it, it's too, we're too big. Um, so you see that we looked at the HOA, POA side, and then we looked at the club side, Jonas. Jonas has a very good reputation. Um, in, the, in the industry, North Star, and North Star is gonna, is gonna be the recommendation, but we're gonna keep on coming, keep on talking about it. And then Club Essentials was another one that was like, oh, that's way too big, we can't handle you guys. Because remember, we have 39,000 lots, and we have 14,500 water meters. That's a lot of customers. And we have golf memberships, and we have activity cards, and we, we just have so much information. All right, now what we did was we got with all our staff members that were involved in this and we gave, had them rate each of these. Uh, we had five different demos and the assumption that we gave them was our current system is a five, okay? So anything better than a five is great. Anything worse than a five is not so good. And you'll see that Yardy, Circuit Connect, and Tops, this big white area here on the bottom right, they can't handle any of those things. There's no scores there because their system can't handle that at all. But if you look at North Star, 
you can see that North Star consistently had very high marks by our own staff. Uh, nines, six and a half, we had a five down there, uh, but most of them are nines. And when you look at the other section, the ones that aren't covered by those three, you see that a lot of nines, a lot of tens, a couple fives, 8.5, 8, 9.0. So all very strong scores across the board and much better uh, than the, comp the competition. Uh, the question marks are areas that we weren't able, uh, uh, on, under Jonas there was a couple question marks, those were not part of the demonstration. All right, so we're recommending North Star uh, to, to integrate all these together. So the other reason why we brought in Bill Booth is he's a great negotiator. And you'll see that uh, the North Star retail price, it started at uh, $460,000, and he was able to uh, beat him up all the way down to two hundred. Uh, and 35. Now, North Star is a piece of the puzzle. Remember, we talked about the other five standalones. All right, so here's the total cost, and, and uh, these next few slides are actually my slides and not Bill Booth's slides. Uh, so you see the initial cost is 377,500 uh, with uh, uh, 21 annual service contracts of $38,000. So you see the total purchase total ask is $416,000. 2022 and ongoing uh, will be uh, $134,000. One of the things that uh, Tia had uh, thrown out at one of our meetings, and I can't remember which meeting it was, um, had said, let's see if we can get that flat for a couple years. Uh, we, were able, we were successful in get that, getting that not go, negotiated in, so for North Star, there will be no increase in the annual service uh, until month 25. So we were able to get it that solid. All right, so how are we going to pay for it? So some of this, we were fortunate. Um, and we were able to do, get some savings. A lot of this is, uh, was labor. Uh, we provided a report, detailed report to the board uh, on where the savings was because of the challenges that we've had. So first of all, in February, uh, we were closed, the entire POA. So consider how many employees that we sent home for four straight days. That generated a lot of savings. The other thing that we're having challenges with right now is filling positions. Uh, some people are calling it the new pandemic, trying to get employees. Uh, it's not, our, you know, the unemployment rate in uh, Northwest Arkansas is very low. So that generated a lot of savings. So we came up with uh, $383,000. Uh, also, by switching over in 21, we're going we're gonna to save on some of our regular annual service costs. That's $33,000. So we were able to generate $416,000. Now, Jan asked a question the other day, uh, and I don't know if this is exactly what you were, you, what you were asking, but, I, but you gave me an idea. So I'm going to assume that this is where you were going uh, because it gave me a great idea. So of that $416,000, how do I feel about it? Okay. So first of all, 194 of that is already saved. Where do you have that? It's already done. Okay, we don't have to do anything else. It was the, in the first three months, and most of it was labor. Okay, the next one is high confidence. Okay, and I think this is what you were asking. Nod your head because because it was a brilliant question. <laughs> okay, high confidence. Okay, why do we have high confidence? Okay, so if you recall, forty-three thousand dollars of that we decided to change we, on uh, the capital expenditure for the water department. We went from 500 to 457. Well, that's an easy, that's, that's a straightforward decision. So we have high confidence that we can accomplish that goal. So what I did was I went through all of our expenditures that I gave you. Um, the first, the most recent one that I gave you yesterday, I marked it off in blue, and then I took it a step further, and I went through and went marked off in yellow the ones that I have high confidence in where we can clearly make a decision and we know that we're going to get it. And then the, 
the sacrifice, and this goes to Tia's question you were asking me yesterday, the sacrifice is the 26, okay? And those are where we're going, okay, we really got to squeeze to get to the number, and uh, so we're going to have to sacrifice, so we're not going to do this. Uh, we're not going to buy that printer we wanted to buy or that desk we thought we needed it. We're, we're going to put that off and we're not going to get it uh, or that kayak or something like that. So what I liked out of this is you can see if you add up the 194 plus the 195, you have almost $400,000 is where we have already saved it, where we have very high confidence that we're going to do it. So this isn't just... Um, and I think this is where Jan was getting at is, okay, are you telling me that you're, you're going to save all this money and it doesn't materialize? I think that's where you were going. And that's why I put this information together because I have high confidence that we're going to make it. Uh, okay, also ongoing savings uh, of 95. So you can see that we're paying for it. And remember, and Stacy keeps on, every time I say, you know, we're breaking even, um, and she goes, but we're getting more. We're, this is not an apples to apples comparison. So uh, even though we're, we're saving, um, she keeps on making the point. So to round out, wanted to cover again. So we brought in an expert in the field to help us through the process, and that was a very good decision. We involved key employees, 22 experts in their field, uh, we conducted a thorough dil due diligence. I think Stacy's probably light on the 80 hours that she's, she's dedicated to this. But we brought in five companies. They gave us demos of six to eight hours. We didn't do like a half hour of demo where we just, we did it in depth every single one. Uh, we checked references. Uh, we are confident. So the, uh, the list of, I think we gave you about 10 or 20 uh, benefits to our membership. There's so much more. Those were the highlights. Uh, and then we aggressively negotiated um, and because we want to get the most bang for our buck. We know this is a big spend. We know this. Uh, but we've got to advance our systems. We've got to uh, modernize our system because it's not working. Any questions? Would you address the option of not doing it now? So in speaking, so I, I was fortunate, I had a conversation with um, the president of North Star. And, um, and I believe in what he's saying is that uh, we are doing very well in this pricing. I think that uh, we've hit at the right time with the COVID and everything else going on. Um, what we've been told, what I was told by the, the uh, company president and what, what I was told by Bill Booth is if we delayed this by a year, by two years, there's no way we would get the same pricing. So um, strike while the iron's hot or it might cost us a lot more is what I've been told uh, by numerous people. Tom, could you back up just a little bit? I had a member ask me and I couldn't answer this question for him. Um, when was the consultant hired? Was that something that was done last year? Yeah. That and was has in, he been paid or is there already a done. bill? He's paid in full. It was all last year. It was all last year. Okay. And then do you know what and, kind of... And, a and let me... Let me ta so th if you look at when we... St when when uh, And this goes into the due diligence because I want to make sure our membership knows that we put a lot of time into this. So... Stacy and I first started talking about this nine months ago. Um, we started talking, we found Bill Booth six, seven months ago. We brought, you know, it, it, this is a lengthy process that we've gone through. So this is not, we're not shooting from the hip running into this. We, this has been slow and methodical decision. How, how did we find him? Um, how did we find him? I can't remember. So we had met with him? several and asked for people that he recommended. And they sent me several, and I called and talked to several of them. And Bill seemed to be the most, um, biggest expert, I guess, in the area, and knew our area the best. 
come to find out that some of the people here at the POA, some of the directors actually knew him uh, from working on him at other organizations and different things, and so it seemed to be a good fit. And do you know um, what system Hot Springs Village, since we frequently compare ourselves to them, do you know what system they use? I, I, I do not know. TEI. They use TEI, okay. according to Stacy. I'm sure they have multiple systems, but I think that's what they're on. Yeah. As I indicated in my previous community, now they, we were, uh, they went to North Star several years after I had left, so it w I was not involved in that. But when I found out that they were uh, one of their customers, I called several people that I know very well just to make sure, uh, because you know every company when they give you a reference, they only give you good references. So when I saw them listed as a customer, I was like, okay, I know exactly who to call. So Bill did a lot of um, research and testing of different systems and whatnot. Um, but as Dan had a good point, did we did, did he do anything in regard to return on investment? Were there any estimations done? We didn't, we didn't go down that path. Okay. Um, a lot of this is internal systems uh, and it, it's gonna be hard to measure uh, how much of a benefit. So with this new system, golfers on you know the the eighth tee will be able to easily go on to their smartphone and put in an order and that food will be ready at the turn that's a hard number to estimate the benefit of that um, the ability of our property owners to be able to go in and book uh, camping reservations and we already know that our campsites are extremely busy but will that have a benefit and will that grow that business Yes, that's a hard number to estimate. Uh, and it's hard to estimate um, the, the benefit of making things easier on our property owners. That's, that's a hard thing to re get a full ROI on. Um, so we didn't do that analysis, um, but we are confident that this is, um, we know this, our system has been sorely neglected for far too long. I, I have no doubt that we need this. Um, I belonged to a club when I lived in Nebraska and we could do multiple things without carrying around a card. So it's sorely needed. And I do see as our community is growing very quickly, hopefully things will be even more efficient and we won't have to hire more employees as more activity cards and more guest cards and more golf reservations are needed. So I hope, you know, as the community grows, I hope that maybe our payroll won't grow exponentially because of that. Agreed. I, I think this is going to give us the opportunity. Uh, we're definitely not coming in here and saying uh, we're going to save on payroll by limiting staff members because I, I, I don't think that's going to happen. But I do think it's going to be able to keep as you're indicating, maintain our current level even though we're growing because uh, if uh, you know the mayor gave me a prediction of 500 or 600 additional homes just this year, um, that's a lot of additional pressure on the current staff. And uh, by installing this system, uh, I'm confident that we're not gonna have to expand our staff and they'll be able to absorb those additional homes, and if it keeps on going, my God, we could be at 17, 18,000 homes in a couple of years. Who knows? We, yeah. we may not. We have a recording of that. <laughs> we may not have done a traditional ROI, but I think if, if you look at the additional benefits to the members, that's certainly a return on our investment. Right. Um, improvements yeah, to Stacy's ability to manage the numbers. I tried really hard to do an ROI because it's important to me. There are just so many moving pieces and so many different software pieces and so much that's changing and I spent hours on it and I didn't get to a point where I was comfortable even sharing with Tom. I just kind of scrapped it because I didn't feel like we could get a good number. I, I just want to say 
thank you to the staff and everybody that worked on this because over the past couple weeks that the board's been looking on this, we've had a lot of requests from you guys, mostly from me, I will blame myself, but you guys turned it around so well and the effort that it took to do this over the nine, 12 months that you guys have been working, it's seen. This is such a hard pill to swallow as a board member to, to even consider voting on something this expensive. It's really hard, but you guys made it easy for me, I can't speak for the rest of them, to look at this and the details you provided us and answering every question every time I've called you guys, to fully understand and look at these numbers, look at the budget cuts, and know that I'm making such an informed decision on something this large. So I wanna say thank you to you guys for that because I think this is something that every member is going to benefit from. Like Sandy said, holding our uh, labor and wages solid while we're growing. The possibility of reducing the activity card fee for members because we're not having to print them. Like the opportunities that this prevents, pr presents in the future is huge. And there's no better time than now to get this done. You, you've proven it in these numbers. Thank you. Jerry Hover, do you have any questions? Mike Ab? No. Mike? No, I don't have any questions. Agenda. I would like to add to what Tia said that the questions I had concerning the numbers added untold number of hours to Stacy's busy schedule in order to break it out as far as, as, down, as far down as she did to give us uh, a good feel for the savings versus the actual results already, the money already saved. So I appreciate that, Stacy. Actually, it was Tom, but. <laughs> Sorry, accounting just goes to you. Yeah, Thank you. I know. <laughs> well, Stacy, you get the credit anyway. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Any other questions? Do I hear a motion? It's on, yeah, it's on page 77. Yeah. I make a motion authorizing management to spend up to $415,500 for the purchase and installation of a community management software system, not including annual service costs. Second. Any further discussion? Included. Yes. Well, the annual service cost is included in, for year one, but for two for twenty one, but not included for twenty two. So the four hundred and fifteen four four hundred and fifteen thousand five hundred includes twenty one service fees, but does not include twenty two. Or thereafter. So I phrased that wrong. <laughs> I apologize. I understand it, and that is what I motioned. <laughs> any, any more discussion? Jerry, are you okay with yes. with what what Tia has said? Okay, I'm good with that then. <laughs> Go back and write it in the transcript. <laughs> any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Mike? Aye. It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Announcements. The Recreation Joint A Joint Advisory Committee meets Monday the 10th of May at 4 p.m. It'll be a uh, in the boardroom as well as via live stream. Uh, I believe all of the JAC meetings are going to be hybrids in the boardroom as well as uh, live streamed. Lakes JAC Wednesday, May 12th at 2 o'clock. Golf JAC Wednesday, May 12th at 4 o'clock. Board of Directors GM session, which is a closed meeting, Thursday, May 13th at noon in the boardroom. 
annual meeting with election results Tuesday, May 18th at Reardon Hall, live and via live stream. Board of Directors work session Thursday, May 20th at nine o'clock will be a hybrid session. Board orientation for new members and um, existing members Friday, May 21st at 9 a.m. in the boardroom at the Country Club. Election of officers and board committee assignments Thursday, May 27th at four o'clock in the boardroom. That's a closed meeting. And then the uh, May regular session, May 27th at six in the boardroom and via live stream. Anything else? Don't forget to vote. Meetings adjourned.